continued from introduction to material dynamics, here introduces an argument about the concept of stress. First, we are going to focus on loads or forces in a one-dimensional structure. The argument is about the relationship between force and stress. Consider this uniform load P acting on the bar as shown in the illustration. The unit of the load is usually newton. It is not kilogram nor kilogram force. What we have got here defined for the bar is the load, then the stress, which is given as sigma with the cross-section area A. Now, let's organize these a bit complex relationship. When a load acts on the outside of the bar, the same amount of force is acting on a surface no matter where you cut the bar. Now, we are thinking about a little bit thicker part in the bar, like a slice of a carrot. For every part of the bar, it transfers this load P, and this internal force N is also equal to the external load P. If you divide N, which is equivalent to P by the cross-sectional area A as the following equation, you can notice that the same amount of stress, which is given by sigma, is acting. The unit of stress is Pascal, Newton per square meters. It is equivalent to the unit of pressure in physics. But you should be noted that the stress in material dynamics is defined as force acting on unit area of internal section of a material. Stress acting vertically on the surface of the illustration is defined as normal stress. Strictly speaking, you can realize that if you pull the outside of a bar, for example, by gripping it with your hand, the stress in this bar are not exactly uniform. If you grab the end of this rod and pull on it, the outside force is inevitably stronger. So, the distribution of stress is not uniform. However, in the fundamentals of material dynamics, which you will learn in this course, you solve this problem assuming that the load on the bar and the internal stress are uniform. If the stresses are not uniform, we will treat it as stress concentration in other part of this lecture. So please consider it separately. As for positive and negative signs of stress, stress generated in the bar or plate to stretch, to cool, which is in tension, is defined as positive value. On the other hand, stress generated to compress is defined as negative value. Positive is in tension and negative is in compression. It is equivalent for strain. If you divide the stretched length by the original length, the strain is positive. If you divide the shrunken length by the original length, the compression strain is negative. The amount of shrinkage in terms of the definition of delta L here you can understand the value is negative. If you subtract the original length from the length in the state of shrinkage, let me repeat again. Remember that the direction of elongation is positive. 
and compression or shrinkage is negative. When stress is applied, it results in elongation generating strain. This strain is positive in the direction of tension and negative in the direction of compression. 